Hello, I'm Dr. David Hawkins from the Marriage Recovery Center and the Emotional Abuse Institute. I want to talk to you about three mistakes made about accountability with narcissists. Three mistakes that you're going to want to watch out for. Now, why am I doing this video? I've done other videos on accountability. I'm doing it because so many mistakes are made. And you may be thinking that you're holding him accountable, and you're not. You're not, and there's no accountability, and when there's no accountability, there's bad behavior, and we don't want that. We want to have some positive impact in his life, in your life. All right, the three mistakes. Number one, telling him that he must be accountable is a mistake. Now, uh, it's not so much a mistake that... Uh, he needs to be held accountable. That certainly is true. But telling him you need to be accountable for your behavior, that's called complaining, folks. It's called confronting. It's called being concerned, all good things. But there's a limit to that. So telling him that he must be accountable for his behavior doesn't hold him accountable for his behavior. That's such an important concept to understand. Does he need to be held accountable? Yes, yes, and we will talk about that. But mistake number one is telling him that he needs to be held accountable for his behavior is not holding him accountable. All right, mistake number two. Often, Spouses of narcissistic and emotionally abusive men put themselves into the role of an accountability partner, and it is exhausting. You know that. You know that. You've experienced that. And so we have this parent child dynamic. We have this overfunctioner connected to this underfunctioner, and it's exhausting. It's just exhausting. So please be very, very careful about putting yourself into the role. And it's a role, by the way. I want you to think about that. It's a role, putting yourself into the role of an accountability partner. Be very careful. Is that best that you do that, that you're in that role? I don't think so. I don't think so. So I want to say that. Mistake number two is you being in the role of an accountability partner. Mistake number three, then, is having a friend or a pastor or a Bible study leader, somebody, attempting to hold him accountable. That's a huge mistake. How, how is it even possible for a friend to be in the role, there we have that word again, that role, how is it possible for a friend to peer into their friend's life, notice the weak areas, notice the vulnerabilities, and then confront him, which will create tension and conflict? It's, it's, it's just not going to work. All right, so the three mistakes again, and then we'll talk about I want to refresh your memory. If you've watched other videos on accountability, I want to refresh your memory about what does accountability look like. The three mistakes, again, are telling him that he must be held accountable is not holding him accountable. Mistake number two, you trying to hold him accountable is a second mistake. And the third mistake is having a pastor, a buddy, a friend, uh, a group leader be in the role of an accountability partner is a mistake. Actually, in all of these situations, accountability doesn't really work. Because remember, accountability, I've covered this in a, in a different video. You can, you can check out our other videos where I talk about accountability. This issue about holding him accountable means that someone 
takes on the role of an accountability partner. They're not a friend. They're not a buddy. They're not a pal. No, they're not a parent. They're not a spouse. This is someone who is willing to take on the role of an accountability partner. And in that role, they know the individual's weaknesses. Where are they likely to have relapses? Where are they likely to struggle? And so there's this transparency, key concept, there's transparency between the accountability person and the person they're holding accountable. There's transparency. This person, this accountability partner, has the character fortitude and strength and tenacity to ask very difficult questions, very difficult questions. And they will do so routinely, sometimes randomly. They will peer into that person's life and ask those key questions. And the person who's being held accountable will be open to that kind of transparency. They understand that the person in the role of accountability partner will be asking difficult questions, will be confronting them, will notice the weak areas, and then will say, oh my goodness, what we're doing is either working or it's not working. And by the way, you, the partner, of the narcissistically abusive, emotionally abusive individual, you will have a voice with that accountability person. You will have a voice into this process. Not that you're going to be parental, not that you're going to overfunction, but that you, you're part of the accountability net that holds him accountable for real growth and real change. So, in summary, be honest with yourself and with him about what accountability looks like. It looks like someone knowing the weak areas, knowing the vulnerabilities, knowing the relapse potential, having access to the person and being able to see into their life and, and having permission to confront them and to say, look, what you're doing is not working, or it is working, and be able to make suggestions about, here's where we can tighten it up, here's where we can uh, create greater possibility for change. And you, the mate, and the individual, we will all form a team. You will all form a team, and that creates a greater likelihood for success. All right, three mistakes about accountability with narcissists. I hope this has been helpful. And as always, click that subscribe button. We have many more videos for you. And if you're in need of some help, click on the link to connect you to our client care team. We are ready and available to help you with treatment, which will include accountability. All right, take care and. As always, God bless.